All right, y'all. This week, I've got a question. As you may know, I'm a huge Poké nerd, and I just want to know how many of you still get down on Pokémon Go. So if you're still grinding, let us know down below, and I'll add you to a ninja's friends list. This was not a paid advertisement for the County Brickley, but Poké Masters better be ready to battle. Claire, your face is so well lit. Look at all the lighting in there. Thank you. Yes, we have a What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to episode 87 of Cali Brick Click. And before we get into introductions, like always, remember you can find this episode on our previous episodes on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, iHeart, and of course YouTube. And like always, we have Ninja. Yo. We have Claire, the plastic architect. Hi. And today we have Adam, aka Ant Bandit. How's it going? Hello, man? hello. It's going good. I'm happy to be here. Sweet, dude. We're going to get into you in a little bit. But before that, how's everyone doing this past week? It's I mean, crazy for me. I'm <laughs> good, but I want to hear about what Claire went through. Yeah. Well, so, hey, Claire was Blinding. like with tech. <laughs> yeah, we were in the UK for like a week. It was cool. I mean, really, it's not like that crazy, but it was fun. We just did um fun touristy stuff like Tower of London, Buckingham Palace, lots of Marner Keep propaganda. It was fun. It was good. And Pokemon World. I yeah. want to talk about that yeah. now. Yeah, you yeah, we went to... Pokemon Worlds. Yeah, what is that? Uh, I don't really know, but it's like uh, <laughs> we we saw a bunch of people walking around with like bags of the the Pokemon Center, and we were like, "Oh, what is that?" and looked into it, and I was like, "It." The first thing that it said was pop up shop. I was like, "Oh, cool, pop up shop," and then we realized that it's at an expo center. It's like at a big convention center, and we're like, "What, what is that?" And then we looked into it like two seconds later, and we realized it's the World Championship. Yeah. Um, and so it's there's like you know kids leagues and there's adult leagues and it's it's a whole thing and it's really cool it's a very very professional thing and it's set up and there's like a ton of budget that's into it and it's it's cool it was definitely really fun to see and they have a shop that you can go to that is independent of the convention it's at the convention but you don't need a ticket to the shop you just have to anyway we went really early we had a few hours to kill before uh, we actually met up with Greg from London Bridge Bricks and um which was really fun and then so we yeah we ended up like finding some merch we actually have like a plushy pokemon from the nintendo store in manhattan which is like a little um statue of liberty and so we were like oh let's go get him a friend because they had like a <laughs> beef eater version works. yeah beef eater is the they're the guards that are at the tower of london they have like the kind of um soft poofy kind of hat situation i mean they're super mm. it's kind of ridiculous the propaganda not propaganda not i mean like it the the merch that's created off this stuff which is like to be a beef eater you have to have like 22 years of excellent service in the military and it's like an honor to be doing that and then there's like a little pokemon with the like little hat <laughs> on i mean as like a re representation of the that position but anyway that was sold out and then so sans got some other stuff but it was it was really fun and like tech grew up playing pokemon and his brother so it was really fun for the both yes, of them and nice. and as for I me mean, i played like a little bit of pokemon on my like game boy color like 25 years ago yeah, i remember those those, yeah. those those are the days yeah i still have mine it's like back you know in our entertainment center yeah, still like, counts. yeah things so that it was fun it was cool i love how we're talking about my london trip but we're talking about the pokemon thing hey i had i had to bring it up i'm sorry <laughs> It's I okay. mean, obviously, you can look at any screen. Yeah. Big, I mean, before this, we were before we started the episode, we were really heavily talking about Pokemon Go and how, because I was kind of confused on the whole like, how did Pokemon come back? Like, was the fan mm -hmm. still there? Or did it like have a resurgence? And then you guys brought up Pokemon Go, and I'm like, oh yeah, I remember that time when everyone was everyone. playing that uh, that app on their phone and, and was that the beginning of the resurgence of the whole thing and there's no research that, there's no research. was it always there it, it's it's always Pokemon's been there yeah a huge thing it's well, i know it's this. huge but like i didn't i didn't, I only thought of it as like a, like just like me like all oh, the people think lego i always thought like just kind of died out with people and and like when the children because yeah. they get into anime they get into other type of things because for me like i was into pokemon i remember in like seventh eighth grade playing Game Boy Color and or buying the cards like their original decks, but like I stopped watching it when they made more Pokemon. So like you had I a, feel like Pokemon Go is to the Lego community what the Lego movie was. Like nice. it brought in people outside of the fandom who were right. like more casuals. It's always been there. The core has always loved it, you know, but yeah. it kind of expanded that, you know. It did. And right. they've left. Like a lot of people have already left from it. But like that core is so much bigger than the Lego core. Like there, there are cards that are worth millions of dollars. And mm -hmm. so like if 
we don't have anything in, in the Lego space that's like at that value. So it still has that's like, true. yeah, it's got collectability, it's got playability, but it's it's definitely not. It's a much it's a much more um, a financially kind of incentivized um, collector's space. Yeah, I can see that. I mean, Ninja, you you could speak to a lot of that, right? <laughs> oh, like yeah. your field. I'm still I'm still in it. Poking poking nerds for life, man. We're in here. No, oh, man. I mean, it would be cool to have Lego partner with that, but we know who has that. <laughs> yeah, that license IP. So that's I mean, not gonna happen. Time. So, Lego had it, had some Pokemon stuff back in the day, but if you want that kind of info, you gotta talk to Sans. He's the one that knows that stuff. I mean, I know nothing of it. This is well yeah. into my dark ages for something like that to happen. I'm gonna say though, a lot of that's pretty cool um, for the Mega stuff, but not only that, but like Bricker builds which <laughs> oh yeah shout That's out right. to them which uh which adam can speak to uh, yeah yeah about all that i i mean it's it's been good for them too that so bricker builds just to plug them they do life-size like lego sculptures they're fan creations you can buy the kits buy the instructions but they do a whole line of pokemon and it's by far their most popular uh like models that they do so yeah, yeah the charizard's sure. dope my charizard uh, the charmander yeah, yeah. charmander is dope yeah, that was cool. Isn't that the, the guy who one? designed mm -hmm. uh, that, or did, he designs most of the Pokemon? His name is Dave Holder. He is an Australian designer. He worked on the Lego Masters uh, Australian version over there. He designs the challenges and stuff. But he is working on a life-size Lego Charizard that he's been working Dude. on for years. <laughs> it's yes. gonna be like gonna be huge. Yeah, like seven feet tall, and he's been buying bricks for it. He's like probably gonna bankrupt the orange brick <laughs> sur <laughs> surplus on Bricklink probably just by building that model, but it's, it's going to go to the mood. It's going to up that pricing, man. If, so you, if anyone wants to build the Charmander, now's the time <laughs> yeah. after that. I will say the funny story. So uh, Bricker builds released their Pikachu. And the funniest thing about that was when they released it, it went over really well, but the surplus of worldwide one by four yellow bricks got super expensive just because they released that model. And it was really surprising because they actually had to modify the model itself to make it more affordable because there were no more one by four yellow bricks. They got really pricey. So uh, just <laughs> funny how that worked out for them. But yeah, kind of playing with what Brickmania does, like it can one uh, a custom set could be one price to one point at a certain price point and then like tomorrow it can change due to the surplus of what's available mm -hmm. it's crazy how you have to deal with it but for the most part like most of the bricks are traditional bricks right or, or mainly yes bricks. yeah most of them for they're just bricks and plates uh mm -hmm. and yellow for pikachu is yellow is one of the most affordable and widely spread colors but like primary colors like red blue all those stuff very uh very affordable as far as uh the bricks go but yeah all their models are mostly bricks and plates for the most yeah. part and then you guys do other things aside from like Pokemonia, like Star Wars. Yeah. That, so my relationship with them, I, I've been working with them for years now. Uh, I was around when they got started and I kind of come in and out as like a freelancer doing content for them. Uh, I just wrapped up a month kind of managing their social media as like an interim uh, while they're looking for someone new to step in. But yeah, they do Star Wars. They do Pokemon. They do. Uh, they just did like a Halo Master Chief helmet, which looks really good uh but it's all like life-size sculptures and they've been doing more conventions and shows so they were at brick world i went to brick world with them and they had a big booth there which is a lot of fun but uh they're doing dragon con here in atlanta in about a week i think that's coming up so it's been a lot of fun to see that grow for him the guy's name is christopher so he's the guy who runs that um, but he's a good friend of mine and i come in and out whenever i'm needed uh basically as a freelancer so okay um I guess we should just dive into you. Can you just give us sure. a what's your Lego story? Because you you've been around the Lego YouTube space for years. Because if you look at your oldest video, it's like what five years ago. Yeah. But it's only like ten videos back. So let, let's get into you. Yeah, I I'm, it's a it's a funny story. I'm I'm a bit of a lurker. I've been around for ages, uh, but nobody knows who I am, which is it's really funny. Uh, so I've only recently, like in the last like year, kind of started to put more work into my own content, but I've, I'm a freelancer. I'm a stop motion animator. Uh, I am now a YouTuber. I'm making my own content over on my own channel. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been great. I, I've been into Lego for my entire life. Uh, I didn't have a dark age. I was the guy in college who had a dorm room full of Lego sets or a shelf <laughs> nice. or something like that. So, uh, but yeah, I, I've been lucky enough to work as a professional stop motion animator for Lego as a contractor. 
uh, worked on uh, everything from Batman to Harry Potter to Star Wars. So that's been a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, it's been a wild ride so far. I mean, one of one of their videos is I'm back or whatever it is. Right. That was like, what, eight yeah. seven months ago? And then the whole concept behind it is like, I'm back. You probably didn't even know who I yeah. was, <laughs> um, which is, you know, this. I, I, stop, let's, stop motion is a is a pretty cool thing. But I was looking at your older videos and the quality of them from back then is pretty good. Thank um, you. And it jumps significantly as far as like what you can add as mm -hmm. you go forward because you do like the CG stuff as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've always tried to like level up, you know, and, and get better as I go doing those. And uh, I've been able to hire other people to come in and do, uh, you know, VFX and CG work. So it's always, it's never just me. It's always like a team of people. I think the largest uh, group I had on a project for something I produced was like six people, something like that. And it was all of us working on different, you know, aspects with me producing it. Um, and, uh, yeah, that's, that's always crazy. But I think this year and you're referring to that video, I kind of realized I was like, you know, I, I love making content and it's really something that I want to get more into on my own channel. And, uh, I started to be like, well, if I just apply all of my experience to making content to promote me instead of somebody else, like that will help me, you know, get more work and just have more, you know, uh, have more fun doing content regularly, which is something I've always struggled with because stop motion, uh, a lot of the client gigs I do for Lego, I kind of languish in the dark for months and I'm not able to talk about it. I'm not able to share anything. It's all secret. Uh, I've done several projects that Lego will be sending me sets months and months in advance to produce a video for, and I can't tell anyone what I'm doing. And it's like, I, I want to, you know, share some of this stuff or, you know, be talking and, uh, you know, be present in the online community so my channel lately this year has been a way for me to do that and uh, kind of get more involved nice so you've been in ninja mode now you're yes <laughs> exiting ninja mode stealth like mode it. yeah, yeah. <laughs> there you go subscribing right now there you Put go out there i did not sweet know. if anything this this podcast has landed me another subscriber so there we go <laughs> plus one so Sorry, I missed all of that. My daughter is like having a meltdown, and I'm the only parent right now. So, like, I'm no, I have like, questions. It was really good. He went through like a whole like synopsis of his background and stuff. So, it's basically what you asked. And so now you're just going to have to like, you know, piece it together. Yeah, no, when you're okay, editing, will, you'll get the answer. So, what is like, are you, are you going to try to take like the same elements and do the same thing on your channel? Or are you like, what's like your overall strategy and stuff with that? So it's it's an interesting thing because I've I feel like I've really had to pivot. Um, and personally, I would love to be doing YouTube content full time, you know, as as a thing. Uh, but for me, with stop motion, it's always been this is something that takes months of work to do. You know, you need a whole team. It's it's something that dominates your your time. You can't really upload on a consistent basis. There's a lot of animators on YouTube or stop motion animators. They're called brick filmers in the Lego community, uh, oh, yeah. but they only upload, you know, either shorts, like really tiny videos every, regularly or, uh, you know, big projects like every two months, which is not conducive to having a successful YouTube presence. So I lately in the last year, I've like, okay, I need to just pivot. We're going to do more general Lego content. Um, I've been doing, kind of behind the scenes stuff on my own channel, but I've also been getting into doing like review videos and uh, just other fun YouTube content, kind of more in the genre of Lego content creation with a little bit of a focus on that stop motion niche. Um, but yeah, it's something that I always will continue doing no matter what the stop motion stuff, but it takes so long to do that. I don't yeah. think there's any way that I could keep doing it uh, on YouTube and be successful. So I've been doing all kinds of different random content on YouTube lately. So just trying different things out. Just, I think the, I like the behind the scenes stuff. Go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, I, I think the behind the scenes stuff is really good. Like, especially since you said, uh, or like you said, that stop motion takes a lot of time, just especially if you're trying to make like a long form video mm -hmm. and not just like a minute. But yeah, the behind the scenes stuff, because I like, I'm looking at your channel right now. Like, that's just interesting to me, you know, because then you yeah. can get tips also. And, like, yeah, yeah. I, I, there's all kinds of stuff that you can do from that angle. But I think that 
and and it's great to see you know a lot of people in the Lego animation community kind of respond to the stuff that I've uploaded. I've I've mm -hmm. been able to meet a lot of people at Brickworld. I got to meet a bunch of animators who were kind of well known in the community, and that was a oh, lot okay. of fun to to get to meet up with them. And uh, but it was it's really cool to see people respond to that. But I think having a more widespread you know yeah. style of content is just better for uploading more regularly oh so, yeah most definitely yeah yeah, yeah there's Not like a weird, i know anything about that no but there's like a weird <laughs> you can still like be observant of it there's like a weird middle ground that's like you know you can there's like more than one strategy you can do daily uploads that are like kind of short or mm -hmm. low effort videos and stuff and that's like a strategy but the problem is you can't like take a break from that you know because you'll take a hit and so it's it's kind of interesting like where to where you're going to land because you have like all the skill set. obviously like you understand social media if you're you know subbing for brick or builds or whatever and so mm -hmm. you know, you're observing it like analytically which is you know we talk a lot about on this on this podcast and stuff because it's something that's oh my god i am the <laughs> only, I'm joking i'm not the she has her own thoughts or the cat has his own thoughts <laughs> yeah, he's, he's he's very he gets very upset when when we're gone so now it's like he i'm oh, right that's here. Hold right on. you got <laughs> important cat thoughts to add yes. here Oh, he's so I'm cute. Just... Yeah, he's he looks very cute, but he's he's a bit of a demon. No, I just think it's um it's really fascinating. And so so how long would you say like you've been putting into like how long has the YouTube channel been going on now for a bit? So I started the YouTube channel years ago just as kind of an outlet to put out mm -hmm. like behind the scenes content. And I, I went over this in one of the I'm back videos, uh in that video that Shai was mentioning. Mm -hmm. But uh I just started posting more regularly, like two months ago. So I'm, I'm still somewhat new to all of it. Uh, and mm -hmm. it's been really fun to kind of put myself mm -hmm. out there in that regard. And mm -hmm. the hard thing for me is just balancing work and doing like yeah. paid work and, and then doing the content as well. Because the content's not there yet, right? It has to. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So like, and also too, so if I get hired by Lego, Lego comes to me and they say, Hey, we want to hire you for a gig. So I, I'm working on literally in front of me right now, I can't show you this, but there is a, there is a project that I'm working mm -hmm. on for a client that is something that's taken up my time for like the last week. And I can't do content mm -hmm. while I'm working on that. So mm -hmm. of course. it's the constant yeah. battle of free time and trying to apply that to myself, you know? So, um, so you're not yeah. really looking at your YouTube channel as a hobby. Like this is like a future endeavor. It's it, well, yeah, it's, it's kind of a bit of both. I mean, it's really the, uh, the place where I want to put the most effort into, but it's also kind of one aspect of the Ant Bandit franchise. You know, I've got right. like, you know, the, the paid gigs are great. And right. uh, that's something that I definitely want to push people to hire me to do work. But um, the, I'd say the channel is more of kind of my passion, uh, right. my passion project, my hobby, but uh, it's something I would love to be doing more often, you know, if I could yeah. find a way to turn down paid work, which I can never do. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, to like pick your words that you said earlier, it also sounds like it's a way for you to be part of the greater community. Because yes. We've been quiet, you know, and kind of in yeah. the back. And so, and to have that engagement from just like a social, social, social aspect. And so um, yeah. I'm curious, like, because we've talked a lot about that before. It's like a lot of people are like, well, how do I like become like part of like the Lego space? And it's like, there's so many right. different ways that you can do it. You can absolutely be like a viewer and like a, an observer and a lurker, as you said it. Um, but like as someone who's like a lurker and now making content, what, like, would you say one is better than the other? Are you starting to be like recognized by like other community members? Are you forming friendships from it? Like, yeah, like, yeah. Please like tell, tell oh, us more about that. I mean, and I'm listening by the way, I'm just going to my stove. I have like 20 things going at the same time. Of course, of course. Apparently. No, don't worry. <laughs> no, it's been, it's been amazing. I, I definitely have had a super rich experience kind of coming out of the shadows, I would say, if that's the nice. way to put it. Um, but one. it yeah. really started for me, I think about two and a half years ago, I joined my local lug and I kind of saw the friendships and the community that everyone had in that lug. And I was like, this is really cool. And, you know, I see people in the community online interacting and having a great experience. And so through the lug, I kind of saw that firsthand and just mm -hmm. how much people had, uh, you know, these great interactions with each other. And so I think for me, you know, putting myself out there, I've definitely made a lot of friendships and a lot of relationships with people just on Instagram and meeting people that I've followed and realized, oh, hey, you know, we have a lot in common. And 
I think that for me, just the community aspect has been a huge part of wanting to pursue, you know, my own channel and, and people who are wanting to, uh, you know, I, at Brickworld, I've made, I made so many friends and uh, just got to meet so many people there who either follow me or I follow. And it's like, Hey, right. this is, this is really good. So I think the community aspect is just super crucial for me as far as, you know, coming out and not lurking anymore. Welcome out of the shadows. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Welcome back, Ty. Yeah, sorry. It's everything like, good. Like, like my family, like my family, my kids have been like super, super extra. Like the past couple of weeks, it's been really rough. I, even though I have one, only one child with me right now, and the other one's in school. It's like, oh my god, just. So speaking of like friendships, this is part of it. You get to hear about mm -hmm. your uh, friends' kids. And, of course, uh, yeah. <laughs> you can meet them, and oh my god, and the, and and the cat, friends, and the cat, yeah. yeah. And this I have a great. puppy running around destroying the house. So, <laughs> oh man, it's like it's like so, oh my god, the world right now. This is like, this is life doesn't stop. You know, life. Oh, it does it. it, it, does it. I'm like, just come on, just let me. Usually, usually my wife's here too, so she'll like kind of manage this this part. So I'd be here mm -hmm. present, um, but she had to go into the office today, and um, I get to work from home, so. But it's it's also like a lot going on. So what I miss? What 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 happened? I had a lot of questions too. So I don't know. I don't want to repeat myself. No worries. Oh, yeah. no worries. We talked uh, about we you just, coming out of lurking. Coming yeah. out of lurk mode. Yeah. We were just talking about yeah, me coming out of stealth mode and kind of what that's been like for me because uh, it's honestly been great. <laughs> and uh, I think there was a lot of the Lego community that I felt like I was missing out on just because I was kind of observing from a distance, and now I feel like I'm in it and and I'm more a part of it more like an active participant so and i'm assuming i'm assuming you're enjoying because i heard i came into the brick world part of that yeah yeah brick world is, is i love going to conventions man i think that really for me just leveled up my interest in just being a part of all this just there's nothing like you know being in a room full of you know afoles and nerdy people who just share that interest there's something mm -hmm. about that that's like these are my people and and i think i found that definitely going to conventions and meeting people and seeing all the work that people put into the builds they bring. And that for me was a huge, all right, I'm in, I'm in the right thing. I'm doing, this is, I feel like I belong in that space, you know? So nice. You only posted like 10 videos. I'm assuming because you know, you have a lot of other stuff going on with your life yep. and then yeah. it takes a long time to actually put uh, um, a oh, stop yeah. motion video out. Yes. Um, it takes yes. time. Does it, does it really take a lot of time? I'm just curious. Yeah, it's it, it's okay. insane, man. I mean, it's something that uh, the way what I always tell people, it's a lot of sitting alone in a dark room for hours and hours on end, yes. which is a, a lot of Lego people are familiar with. But it's it's lonely and it, it it's it's a process. But uh, yeah, it takes a long time. Everywhere from uh, sometimes I'll have like a month to do something. I think the longest I spent on a project was like four months, and just on a singular project that was for a uh, a Lego Batman short that I did. You can watch it on my channel, but. Yeah, that was a four month long process just from pre producing all the way to the actual production. And there's post production. Um, and during that, like, you can't make videos. I can't, you know, take my camera and I'm going to clear my animation space and I'm going to make my own, right. you know, short film or something like that. It's all about that one thing. And so well, every day, in and out, it's just working on that I one project. Question. Is that because of like your brain and like how you're focused and how you need to focus on that project? Or is it simply because the physical space of that project takes away from where you would normally do another video? It is, it is both. I mean, it's mostly, the, I would say the physical, like there logistically, there is almost, it's incredibly difficult to produce content while I'm working on like a paid gig. Um, yeah. And right now I've been working on kind of, I have a separate room up in my house that I've, I'm really trying to invest in to make like a like a shooting space where I can do set reviews and other kinds of things like that, where that space is locked off and it's got its own camera. Um, but mm -hmm. for the most part, like if I'm working on a project, like it is all in on that project. Mm -hmm. It's every day grinding over and over again and uh, really long hours. My wife is really understanding. So she's like, when I'm in the context of a project, she knows like, hey, things are, this is a busy time. And uh, when it wraps, I'm good. So, um, but yeah, I'm trying to find that balance of like mentally, you know, being able to come in and out of content mode or content creator mode. Um, mm -hmm. And it's been interesting. I, I've been having a good time, you know, working with uh, Beyond the Brick. I've been doing some videos for the Hanlons, uh, doing some reviews. So that's been kind of my uh, 
t- dipping my toe into the, the the content creation world there and trying to balance those. Hey, I'm working, but I'm also making videos. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been interesting. I was going to ask, like, do you need to be like financially like motivated maybe? Because like, that's totally fair if you do. That's like not a bad thing. It's right. just sometimes hard. I know like a lot of people, like if they're not working, they like guilt themselves into not doing other things that they would normally do, you know? So I think that's like a hard part too. I mean, at least for me, like I, I'm very similar. Like when I'm working and focused on something, it's very hard for me to think about anything else. Mm-hmm. And which is, uh, from my experience, a bit problematic, you know, you know, balancing personal life and friendships and, and family and then other projects and other hobbies. And so it's like a constant learning experience over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And so I just, um, yeah, it's almost like, it's almost like the, like if I were in your shoes, because I kind of am in the sense that like, I love YouTube. It's super fun to do. I would love for it to be more financially, uh, stimulating, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it is, you know, like I would love for that, but, um, every time I work on it, I'm like, oh, but I should be like, I should be like doing my job or I should be like, you know, cause like my financial potential in my head is in these other avenues. And so it's like kind of hard to, to stop yourself. And it's almost like, do you sleep or do you do that? And then, right. Like, yeah. yeah. So I don't know. It's, it's a bit, it's hard. I, yeah, I empathize. program yourself. Yeah. I empathize. I mean, I'll yeah, also totally. find it pretty hard for like, for Adam or any stop motion to like change your setup. <laughs> Because yes. like your lighting is very important, it's very noticed when like you the move camera position your lighting or your camera off. So to have a separate space for other type of content is actually smart. But another thing I wanted to like bring up was that I watch a few stop motion content creators. I'm really only subscribed to like a few, but like they get a lot of views, but they hardly post. Yes. But um, one prominent one in in the community, like a huge one in the community. Um, Forrest, um, Forrest Whaley, yeah, 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 yeah. So he was Crazy. at he was at Chicago too. Um, brought his family. He's st- he's was like that for a while, right? He only posted his stop motion, but then he started coming out mm-hmm. of the woodwork as well. He's live streaming, um, and it's really interesting going on his live streams just because it's so boring. <laughs> he's not really <laughs> communicating with it, with the people that are on the stream, but his streams are like people understand that yeah. this is the grind that he's doing. They're just there to watch it happen. Um, but you know, he's posting oh, okay. other things as well. And you know, that's cool to see. Like, I like seeing that. So to see you do the same like concept of like, kind of bring yourself out there, not necessarily focus on the stop motion, but like, here's what's happening, right? Here's back up, like you know, update, how to yeah. do this, like how to make this, like, that's really cool. Cause I don't see that many people showing how to make a stop motion type of, uh, video and the, the equipment used behind it and like tutorials and, you know, like comparisons, especially when you're in console video, or like, you know, this is the, this is the stop motion. Here's the actual thing. Does it, does it look whatever, like the same? Yeah. Um, so that's, that's very, that's smart. Like there, there's other ways to make content without actually showcasing your actual piece. Right. Um, but what I was, was claire was alluding to or she kind of said already i was curious to see if it's like your your head is just so focused in like what you want to finish like a movie or whatever it's kind of hard to sidebar yourself and stop that creative process to in completing what you're already doing and divert to something else yeah yeah i I mean that really is it i think you know uh i'm i'm a very all-in kind of person and i think I, i don't know where the saying comes from but you know if you're creative a creative type person which we all are you know you, you've only got so much of a cup to pour from every day and so when it comes to working on like a paid gig if i'm you know say disney hires me to do another lego video then all of my creative energy goes into that that gig that's putting yeah. you know money in my bank account bread on the table that kind of a thing and then when i come out of that or if i clock out the you know i'm like I've got no more juice left basically. So I think that's kind of been the hard thing for me. Um, But yeah, it's, it's been something that I think, you know, I can learn to manage just balancing um, and trying to figure out where to put my energy. Um, But it it is, it is very hard for me to focus just on anything other than one thing at a time, which is great because when I am doing videos, I feel like I can really devote my time to making a really good YouTube video or a good behind the scenes or you know, good stop motion tutorial. And that I think is, is really good, but you know, coming, managing multiple things that juggling multiple balls at a time, I, I can't do that. 
Um, so it's always been a challenge for me to do that. There, well, there's ahead. like a, it's a totally separate skill set, right? There's a reason mm -hmm. there's like the people actually producing the work are at one level and then there's management. Not that they're saying that they're above, but that they, people need to be managed because otherwise right. like they can't do every single role. And yes. so, and there's this problem that I think a lot of creatives have where it's like, the only way for me to do the best job I can do is if I dive and kill myself and do long hours or whatever. It is not true, by the way. That is like not a true thing. It's so hard to get into the habit of doing that because it's like you forget because you're sleep deprived that you should have gone to bed and that you keep mm -hmm. going. And it's like this circ like it's circuitous or it's it, it's 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 really, really unhealthy. And it's like I'm speaking as somebody who does that. I'm not yeah. assuming you do that. It kind of sounds like you do because you mentioned a few things. Oh, I definitely do. That is definitely me. You just described my experience. I, I will not sleep if I'm working on a project. It'll, it'll, right. I suffer. <laughs> the problem is like, you have to stop yourself and be like, wait a second. Like yeah. I'm not at my tip top because you, you feel like you are, you feel like you're producing really well. Like, at least for me, like I wake up at night, you know, like creatively, like I start, you know, my eyes start really opening because like, I don't have as much input and I can really focus on stuff. But like, after a certain point, you have to stop and be like, wait a second, I'm actually like more productive if right. I sleep and then I can time management better. Like it's mm -hmm. the amount of effort it takes to manage your own creativity, your own time, your own life requires so much like core effort that you have to sleep and rest and work out and eat right. And you have to do all these things that when you're focused on a project, you're like, I don't, I don't want any of that stuff. I don't want, I don't, you don't even want to think about yeah. any of it. Right. And it's like so hard. And it's like, I don't know. I don't know what the trick is because like, I always, I'm like this with that stuff. You know, when I'm like at the top of my game, I'm doing like 10 different projects at the same time. I'm on my hobbies. I've got a social life going on. I'm working out. I'm eating great. I'm like totally on top of it. But then like, I'm either there or I'm here and there's like no in between. And it's like such an extreme personality type that I feel like it's going to just like end my life shorter at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like, I just yep. like don't know. I don't know what that middle ground is. I don't know what that, whatever people call balance. Like, it sounds like nonsense. It sounds like they have like nannies and housekeepers and cooks and I don't know, like whatever. They have personal assistants to like schedule their dental appointments. Like, I don't understand how people balance everything. So anyway. I will say too, and and you just described my experience to a T. It is either you know, this or that. Like there's, it's really hard to find that mystical in between. But I will say, like for me, and I, I'm curious if you guys also feel this way. I mean, being Lego content creators, like for me, when I'm working in my hobby and doing something, I'm being paid to do with Lego. Like I'll, they'll send me sets, and it's like I have to go into work mode. Sometimes it can be really hard for me to unplug and try to go into fun mode and hobby mode with the Lego. I remember there was one project I did where I was like, I just need a break from Lego for like a month and a half. I'm not going to touch a brick. I'm not going to touch the plastic. And I hate that because I want to jump in and like, okay, now I'm, you know, making some fun content and, and it starts to become that chore. So for me, like managing, you know, there's the, the personal enjoyment of Lego, which is the stuff that you don't film. Then there's the, the work. And then there's also the stuff, that, the content that you have to make, which is fun and also, you know, work that you have to put into it. So. But you're like a you're like a case study for like why you don't monetize your hobby. You know exactly. I mean? <laughs> and it, it, it's it's hard because it's almost like you need another hobby right. to kind of like relax from almost like whatever yeah. that is. So I haven't experienced that because like the only degree I can yeah. relate to because like my my channel is like still fun. It's still hobby based. But when I have tried to look at it from a more strategic, you know, thoughtful, like as though I would be like a creator space, I end up getting, um, I wouldn't call it stage fright. I would call it, I don't know. It's like, I get like creative, I got some kind of creative block with it mm. immediately. Um, and, but I've had that with, um, you know, my profession, which is like construction and architecture where I have, when I started really working, I stopped being passionate about architecture as a design. Like people are like, Oh, what's your favorite architect? And I was like, I don't, I couldn't give two shits. Like, honestly, like about, I like, I could not care about like other architects. You know what I mean? Like, it's just after working, you kind of like, you're like, cool. There's some awesome buildings out there, but like, whatever. And it's almost like, because it like got so associated with work and like, you know, unhealthy boundaries with work. And so it's like, I didn't want, 
to really think about it or see it or anything along the lines of that. And it's taken me a long time to like go on a, a vacation and enjoy like looking up and looking at, at buildings. And so I was able to do that this time because, you know, I'm a couple years out of a very unhealthy relationship with work, but I don't know. It's, I, I don't blame you for feeling that way. And it's, I don't know what to tell you because it's like you, it's only going to get worse to be totally frank. Right. If you, <laughs> If you if your YouTube channel does great, which sounds like it will at some point, you know, give it time. And if you still put the effort and the strategy that you're doing, right, it's going to do well. It's only going to be another source of income and stress and work. And then you're going to there's going to be this gray area where you have to pick between doing gigs for like, you know, Disney and Lego or whatever it is. And then your YouTube channel. And then there'll come a point where the YouTube channel is worth more. Right. And so you'll say no to the other things because it doesn't take time, but you kind of want to do it because they're like cool things and they're like nice icebreakers and conversation starters to be like, oh yeah, I did that or whatever. But so, so it's like a hard middle ground, right? So then that YouTube channel is going to become less and less like a hobby. So like, what do you, what do you, what are you going to get another room in your house for like, I don't know, Pokemon cards? Like, what I feel like I need to be yes. paying for this therapy session. This is no. like actually like sage <laughs> wisdom from Claire here. <laughs> no, no, I'm, it's not, I'm not, I'm really not trying to give wisdom. It's more just like, I've thought good. About this a lot. Because yeah. it's just as, like creative people, you it's a really common thing to struggle with like work and with, mm -hmm. because like you're creative because you, you get emotional and psychological satisfaction, right? From doing whatever it is yeah. you're doing. And so you're like, I have to be in a field where I do this. And then, cause like Shai always talks about, he's like, I wish I was in a more creative field. I wish I like didn't pursue X, Y, and Z, but it's like not all it's cracked up to be because it kind of takes, it takes away a lot from like that part of your brain. Like I used to paint and draw and sculpt and do photography and fashion. I used to make my own clothes. I used to do so many things. I used to change my nail polish every day because it was like a different creative expression. I haven't done stuff like that in years because I ended up like taking whatever creative like juice I had and throwing it into work. It's and drained. it's like, yeah, yeah totally yeah. drained. And the amount of work that you like, it's, it's the cup and like the amount of work it takes to like refill that cup it becomes harder and harder and harder to do. Uh, yeah. anyway. That is so true. Like even, no, no, it's true. Like I, I, my work now is the furthest thing from creativity. It's literally I'm <laughs> reporting BS. That's all, that's all I'm doing. And, and I look forward to like content creation, building anything that's to do with that part of my brain. And it, it, I don't feel drained when I'm completed something. And even when I was, you know, running stuff for Urban, like when I did merchandising and construction, that wasn't my main focus. My main focus was running the business. And then when I got to play, I got to play and had fun and I can fully invest into projects like that. So that that epiphany just hit me right now. So thank you, Claire, for that. Um, so I I can't say that I'm envious of you two who are uh, who are both in creative fields on your own outside of this space. Um, and now I am no longer jealous of it. <laughs> so I am now grateful <laughs> that I have a balance of oh, um, both sides of my brain capacity. It's not, I mean, look, it's not all bad. It's not all yeah. bad. There's like, I wouldn't go back and be like, I wish I was an accountant. Like, there's no way. But like, I, but, no, but, and but I your hobby, is, while, your hobby I is, is that same part of your brain. It makes perfect sense. Like my other hobbies, I don't need to be creative. I have to think mm -hmm. a lot. <laughs> so like, or it's physical, yeah. you know what I mean? Or like when I'm working out, like, you know, it's, that's, that's where it is. So I have other, other, even, even if I was creative at work, I have other outlooks to like, kind of not have to use that part of my brain. So I, yeah. I can rest. And I think that's, that's why I'm able to like soldier through to like three o'clock in the morning on something when I want to do it, as opposed to you two, where you're already soldiering through as much as you can at work where you're trying to create something and then you get off trying to make your hobby and like get into your hobbies and be mm -hmm. like, mm. <laughs> I need a beer. Like, you know what I mean? Like that's, that's, that's pretty much like, I don't have that dilemma. Yeah. So I can't, there I can't... there are a lot of like trades you have to make. I think when you're mm -hmm. in a creative field, I mean, there's a lot of hobbies that are, I mean, most, I feel like most hobbies are creative, you know? And so it's important to have those outlets, you know, and I, I think it is something that I love doing and, and even YouTube and, and just the, you know, making my own content, like there's the, the reason I do it is because it is satisfying, you know, and, it, and it's something I'm passionate about. And, um, you know, anything that I'm doing is, 
is going to fulfill that creative need for me. But for me, it's always like, where do I point my creative energy, you know, into, into getting, you know, the most out of it for me. And, and, and for me, like pointing it at my YouTube channel, it's fun. And it's something that I want to grow. I've seen a lot of just personal returns from that, just had the fun of, you know, I'm, I'm here, you know, I am talking to you guys, you know, this is fun, you know? And so like pointing it at the YouTube channel is definitely something that I think is most fulfilling for me just as a passion and as a community and getting involved with new friends and, and meeting people there. Um, and then obviously t- taking that and pointing it at, you know, a job is going to help me survive, you know, from, mm. from those paychecks. So it's, it's all about, you know, trying to just bounce between the two and find that, you know, find that. And, and this, this platform, like to, to be successful on YouTube, you have to love making videos and you already yeah. do that. Like that's your main thing is making videos. Like, no matter what it is that that's the main that's the yep. end game for every every task that you're given whether it be stop motion or uh videos for like other people whatever it is like that's your end game whereas mm-hmm. all of us have other other ways to kind of divert our creativity i do appreciate though the fact that like you were like you know i've done this for other people now it's time to do it for myself because i think a lot of people are either ashamed of doing that or they don't have the self-confidence to do that because the reality is financially you will be significantly more successful as your own creator versus like being a supporter, right? Like having that supporting role. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I think a lot of creator creators, like types tend to like want to hide in the shadows, you know, and kind of like do their own thing. And so it's definitely like a big leap and also like great that you said that it's not like you're some people I think would pretend that that wasn't the case and they would be just like, yeah, I just feel like I, you know, I want to, you know, like test the waters or something like that. But you're like, no, I want to do this for myself. And rather than supporting other people, I want to work for myself. And there's so many different ways that you can like do that in your life, whatever it is. And it's, kind of, you know, emotionally, if you're like a really good friend and you're like always the listener or whatever, and like you realize that you haven't been really taking care of yourself, you know, it's really important to kind of turn that energy around and be a little bit, a little bit self-focused and a little selfish every once in a while, because you're only going to have more success with that. Right. And mm-hmm. it's, Like the environment that that YouTube is, is like, even though it's the best at like, you know, making friends and like, we'll get on calls and we'll we'll stay up late or like be on Discord or whatever it is, you form those friendships. But sometimes that actually does like a bit of a disservice. And there's um, you you kind of can get distracted from the social aspect is my only kind of like heads up with it. I don't know if you found that a little bit because it's like. You're, you're chatting with people and you're getting to know them. I'm not saying you shouldn't have come on Cali Brooklyn and you should just <laughs> working on a video, but, but you'll find yourself, you know, being like, Oh, I'd rather hang out with my friends and chat with them than like make like a crappy review video and I'm not <laughs> saying your reviews are crappy, but you know what I mean? It's like, it's kind of yeah. starts to like outweigh that too. Right. And I, I don't know it if happens you've like a lot. That. <laughs> yeah, it happens a lot. And there's like a few people I'm thinking of right now that also do that <laughs> a lot. Um, and right. I did that for like a while. I don't know. It's really, it's, it's just interesting how like, I think a lot of people will find themselves in that position as well. Yeah. So pretty much don't let us distract you from. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, it's been great. I'm going to go shoot a review <laughs> video right now. I'll see you guys later. You know, <laughs> cause uh, it, that, yeah. First hand experience. I can hundred percent relate to what Claire just said. Yeah. Cause that's happened more times than, than none in the past month. Um, Except for this past week because she left. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, it, it's good to have you around. It's good to see a face. Um, sorry, I didn't know who you were. <laughs> no, hey, it, it's it, it's been great to meet you guys. I, I like I said, like I've been I've been lurking so much, and you know, I, I think I I briefly met you at Brickworld, shy. I think mm-hmm. we crossed paths, but um, but Thanks yeah, it's brick. it's. I'm I'm sure the next convention, wherever it will be, we'll we'll uh, we'll hang out for sure. Yeah, so for sure, I don't even know how to like. It was not the topic of it doesn't even matter at this point because clearly like. <laughs> brought it up to this point where I can't turn it back around to curiosity. <laughs> so we can uh, we can talk about stop motion stuff. If you guys have any questions about that stuff, I I, I could share some fun anecdotes uh, from my time in that world. If you guys want to hear some stories, yeah, that'd be fun. I'm, yes, I'm do it. About it, yeah. yeah. Cool. I'm sure there's a lot of people who listen would love to know the ins and outs of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So uh, I can just kind of rewind and we'll just shift gears to to how I got into this. So I was uh, I went to film school to uh you know get into the industry and at my college there was a uh like a student film festival and you know all the students it's like the big end of the year thing everyone submits their passion project 
And uh, I was the guy, like I said, in my dorm room with the Lego sets on the shelf. And uh, I was like, you know, I want to try this animation thing. I want to try making something for this film festival. And I had a friend of mine come to me and said, don't waste your time. This is so lame. It's going to take so long. It's not going to be worth it. You won't win. Uh, and I was like, all right, challenge accepted. Like, you're not going to tell me I can't do it. And so uh, I'd set my dorm room and I made a, a little short film. It's still on my YouTube channel. It's called The Painter. And I entered it and I ended up sweeping the entire film festival. So to my nice. surprise, uh, I won a bunch of awards uh, and I was like, oh, OK, maybe I, I should take this thing seriously and try it out. And so that was the first thing that I had made. And uh, then there was a point in which uh, there's a company called Tongle that does open pitches for uh, they're like a marketing group that does work with the Lego group. Uh, and they had an open pitch for a Star Wars uh, campaign. And so I was like, oh, let me submit, see if I get in. I submitted a Star Wars fan film that I had made and uh, then uh, kind of basically just got into that and they accepted me. And that was my first like paid gig from the Lego group, which was super, super fun. Um, but yeah, it's it that was kind of my entry into stop motion paid work was through that, through Star Wars. And uh, I've got behind the scenes on my channel of all of that if you guys want to see it. But um, I, I did from that from Star Wars. I went to Harry Potter, uh, which was very interesting. <laughs> Harry Potter. I and I, I don't want to like. I, it's been many years since this, so I can probably talk about this. But the uh, the experience was really interesting. So I'm sitting there doing my storyboards, and you know I'm kind of a one man band. So I do everything from storyboarding to you know inter interacting with the the client and you know emailing all that I handle as well. And so I'm sitting there doing my storyboards for this Lego Harry Potter video. And the producer calls me and says, do you know who's reading your storyboards and your scripts? Do you know who's looking at this right now? And she said, it's JK Rowling herself. And I was like, no, <laughs> let me go pressure. and redraw all of these. No pressure. Uh, yeah, super big pressure. Uh, but I guess she's just so like, you know, controlling about her baby, you know, and her, her IP uh, that she wants to approve every single thing, even, you know, so she went through, she would go through my scripts and she would like tell me, Oh, but this isn't Canon. We can't, you know, show these characters in this location because uh, you know, for whatever reason they don't show up this in the books or anything like that. Hmm. That was really interesting. Uh, getting those notes from JK Rowling. Um, she red penned your work. That she is, she would come back with notes. She came back with notes. She was very specific about what I could and could not do in the Lego commercial. I mean, they change. It's really interesting because they change things from the books to the movies as to like yeah. students, certain students in specific classrooms, you know, like and those kind of dynamics. And so it's not like they just like left things out. It was like, you know, to have to push this the story forward, I guess, you know, that that sacrifice was worth right. it, but maybe not for right. this situation. I mean, like, so do you feel like that helped you with that process? Just did that specific task is kind of narrowed it down to like, OK, this is what you want. I can still be creative, but like at least I have a, a more focal point to where the story's supposed to go. Did that help at all, or no? I think no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Jay, I, I think notes. It, it's it's funny because you know the way the hierarchy works when you're doing a paid gig for Lego. You've got Lego and their approval, and Lego has always been great. You know they have always been super understanding, super creative, offering ideas like very. Also, like here's your creative vision. Why don't you know we trust you? They're very trustworthy, trusting of me. Uh, but then there's the other client, which is in this case, it was Warner Brothers and J.K. Rowling. And they're very in that specific job. They were very this is what we want. This is what we need. This is what you can and can't do. Um, and at that point, we had already kind of been in this one creative direction. And they said, you got to go a completely different direction, which is time and effort. You know, so it's it's always like I'm super lucky to work on these things. Like, you know, I'm not going to complain. Uh, but it is interesting to me always how, you know. Lego has always come to me with incredibly open arms to say, you know, we trust you. And then the other clients are always like, let me talk about this one frame so, <laughs> that you animated. I don't like well, that I, one frame. I have, a, I have a question for you. Like, so with, so with like architecture and like buildings and stuff, there's mm -hmm. always multiple clients as well, right? There's like the financing, there's the creative people. There's like all these, all these hats that you kind of have to yeah. play, like all these people that you have to check off. But like, isn't Lego the prime and like theoretically like it's their responsibility as the project manager on that team 
to filter out the information from Warner Brothers or J.K. Rowling and give you effective direction from the beginning. And if the client changes it, isn't that like an ad serve where you get to extend your fee? Like in, what? In that case, it was Warner Brothers is the license holder and they yeah. are the king. So if it Lego, you know, it was funny. And and I, I don't think this is revealing too much, but Lego would come to me and be like, listen, here's what we got. Is there anything that you can do? They, they're kind of in the same boat as me um, working with Warner Brothers. So Warner yeah. Brothers in that case had all the power. Uh, well, I have I worked with. That totally makes sense though. But like, yeah. so I've been in that situation where Lego is in a lot and you hire mm -hmm. people as like subs and right. stuff. I, I think it is Lego's responsibility for getting the information quickly enough and getting it back to Warner Brothers enough early enough to get yeah. feedback. And trust me, I get it. Like stuff changes last minute. But I'm like, it's not, and I don't think it's right that they villainized Warner Brothers when they probably didn't send the email early enough. I mean, I don't know. I'm s s setting the situation. They're, yeah, like, no, they they are definitely, they've gone to bat for me so many times. Which um, is great. It's great. Yeah. And there's just like harder clients and easier clients, obviously. And from yep. their perspective, like the IP holder, or not to talk about client, but there's like, there's more difficult parties to work with. Mm -hmm. And it just feels like, did it like in that specific situation, I mean, I don't know. Shouldn't you involve like, you know, this person that's going to have final say like right from the beginning, but who knows? Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Like in that case, I, and, and there is a lot of context missing from the yeah. story too, because course, you know, so. JK Rowling being, you know, the as busy as she is, she can't get in right. there. Either. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So look in that at case, it until it's at the end, you know, it's like, oh yeah. So yeah. And that, that was one of those unfortunate timing scenarios. Um, but in the past, Lego has always been, you know, Hey, you know, they, they, they're, they very much kind of had me and my, you know, vision. They've had me in mind and everything that they do. Yeah. Um, and, you know, usually sometimes when it's just Lego, I mean, I've worked on a few projects where it's Lego is the, it's a, it's a Lego IP. And, you yeah. know, for those, those are much, much more course, easy to deal less with. Parties, like, exactly. to deal with. I, so I, so I have a lot of, it's really frustrating sometimes because like, um, Lego will have like PR releases and stuff, you know, they'll make changes and they'll delay sets yeah. or whatever. And they'll blame, not blame, or they'll direct the reasoning for it to Disney or to Warner Brothers or to whatever it is, whatever holding party that is. And I don't know why that always left a sour taste in my mouth because that powerhouse of Warner Brothers or Disney or whatever is such a massive financial fuel for Lego that it just seems like a weird thing to do is to like, be like, not my fault. Mm. And I don't know if that's maybe like a Danish thing or whatever it is, or maybe even an American thing. Cause people are always like, not me. Like, don't sue me. Like, I don't know where it comes from. Yeah. And like, I don't know. It just seems like so anti like team effort because like within the like microstructure of it is that Lego is. And if you're like a sub consultant to them, it seems like they're really supportive and they're great to work with. And they're one of like, internationally recognized companies that it's great to be an employee of yeah um, especially at the corporate level and so and it seems like very much like a team 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 we 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 you know like kind of energy but like that aspect of like there's lego and then there's the ip holders and it just seemed i don't know for some reason to me it always just seemed disingenuous because lego is making so much money off of harry potter star wars marvel and it's like they are dependent on these ips so I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. It's like, I don't like the whole, it's not me. It's them. Like, I just like, do not like that response in any situation. The, the, ever. Only, thing, the only thing I can say to that is that it was surprising to me to like getting into this, you know, as a, as a contractor and seeing the different, like big companies interact. Like, you know, you've got Lego and you've got Warner brothers, you know, there's also like, I've done stuff with DC. It is always, it was always surprising to me, like how much, you know, the, the, the communication, I mean, obviously in that case, you know, we needed to talk to JK Rowling and she wasn't available and it was that kind of situation and it was very much on Warner brothers. And, and so I kind of understand that like Lego saying, Hey, we're trying to, you know, this is, this is not our doing. Um, there is definitely a surprising like communication structure where you've got these massive companies who are trying to do things together and things just don't work out and yeah. it's not always Lego's fault. And, and I definitely think there is a, uh, I don't even know how to describe it. It's, well, it's, it's different company structures and philosophies working together. Yes. It takes an incredibly sophisticated 
manager to get that together. And there probably is few and far between of them, to be totally honest. Like the amount of, like, you know, maybe you should have been put on pause until JK Rowling should have been involved. Maybe like until JK Rowling was committed to a date, you shouldn't have been engaged. Do you know what I mean? There's like stuff like that, that like maybe someone didn't want to like put the kibosh on it because they were like, we need to get this project going, hire, get him going, blah, blah, blah. Like, it's just, my point is, I get it. It's super hard. It's super complicated. And it's like everyone's learning and trying to figure it out together. Um, but it's just really, it's really fascinating. Anyway, it's totally a sidebar. <laughs> well, that, that, that led to some serious topics <laughs> that we could really dive into. I just want to say, uh, Warner Brothers, uh, no hard feelings, JK, Rowling, <laughs> if you're watching that. <laughs> just throw it out there real quick. No, I just, it's also really interesting. Like it is commendable for someone at that level to be involved in a stop motion. Yeah. Like, yeah. I yeah. It's a pain in the ass or sorry, but it's also. It's also fascinating and really interesting and very, um, it makes sense. Like it's, you can definitely see that because like, this is her name, her project, her, her canon. This is her legacy. And it's so loved because it's been, she's been so involved in it. So it's like, you can't. I was, I was kind of thinking the same thing, but, but did, uh, did Lucas films say anything about your Star Wars stop motion? They were a lot easier to work with. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Don't they have like bigger canon issues though? And like that's what I was like, wondering. Like, yeah, I I will <laughs> say I have only ever experienced that kind of canon of correction from yeah. Warner Brothers because I think that the the general understanding when you're making at least Lego stuff is that it's humorous and there's right. a little bit of free roam, you know, that you can have when you're making a Lego commercial or a video. It's like you can take some liberty, and so. Uh, I think I found Lucasfilm to be a little bit more understanding of that vibe than Warner Brothers. Uh, and the Warner Brothers, the Harry Potter videos, I'm super proud of. They turned out really well. Um, and I, I, I think creatively, those are some of my best projects. But mm-hmm. as a process, it was definitely a different beast. You know, and you work mm-hmm. with different people. Um, and uh, but yeah, Lucasfilm was very much more open <laughs> to interpretation. Yeah, I mean, like, what is it? Isn't there like a do we have like a Star Wars Summer on the Beach special or whatever? Yeah. You know, Life Day. There's so many things that have come out of Star Wars that are, I guess, a bit more questionable, I think. Um, mm-hmm. I think there's a reason. It's just interesting. They're totally different franchises who are super financially powerful. And it's just, it's really interesting. That's really cool that you get to work with, like, through the, you know, the vehicle of stop motion and Lego, you get to work with these different avenues, which is really yeah. cool. It, it's honestly been amazing. And, and I, I'm super, super lucky and super blessed to, to be able to do it. I never thought, you know, that it would be something that I would get paid to do. And so it's just something that I'm always like, ah, oh, I'm working on it. I did a, the, in, you, you mentioned the Encanto video. So I did the Encanto uh, video for Disney and it's that for that video, it was Disney animation, like the animation studio, you know, mm-hmm. sending me notes. It's like, this is this is so cool. You know, I have a little bit of a nerd moment every time I get, you know, paid or brought on to do a project like that. So it's really fun. The networking and all that is serious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It is. It is. You get to meet a lot of cool people doing that kind of stuff. So it's, it's really fun. So I don't know if you answered this before, but I mean, I'm interested to, to know what got you into stop motion. Yes. Like was it a uh, movie or something that you've seen? So I grew up, it's funny, this, and it all comes back to Lego. I grew up watching, uh, there was a Lego short made by a uh, UK-based company called Spite Your Face Productions. You can find it on YouTube, uh, but they that was the name of the production company. They made some, they were the first ever Lego com- or, uh, company outside of Lucasfilm to make a Star Wars uh, like fan film or commercial, the first ever. Uh, and it's a short called the Han Solo affair. And it's like a Lego brick film and it's got the Star Wars characters and they run around trying to get Han Solo. He's in carbonite. Uh, it's really fun. It's really classic. It still holds up. Uh, but I watched that as a kid and I was just fascinated. And I think that really got me like, this is super cool. That was really the entry point for me nice. into stop motion. Uh, I also grew up watching like Wallace and Gromit and a bunch of other stop motion that were like claymation style yeah. stuff. Um, Wallace and Gromit is great. Uh, it's a great TV show. Um, and <laughs> yeah, it's, 
it, it is really fun. I, I think that still holds up, to, you know, to this day too. That's made by Ardman Animation. They're also UK. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, I I really kind of as a I was like maybe fourteen or fifteen, you know, going online and there's a there's a Lego forum. It's still around. It's like brickfilm.com or um, I can't remember what it's called, Brickfilm or something like that. And I was really active as a kid. You know, everyone, all these kids are posting their Lego animations and everything. And for That's me, that was awesome. that was really the the starting point and the, the start of the obsession. And ever since then, it's okay. always been this is just such a cool way to make movies and make you know videos and films like with lego too i think the greatest thing about it is that you know i mean we're all lego people you can look at a lego thing and you can say you know the scale of that you know the relative right. like the size of those sets you know like it feels tactile you know it feels like somebody had to go in and physically move every single object in that frame you know for every frame and that to me is just amazing so yeah okay I wanted to dive into your process on and all that, but I feel like that's another hole that will take an hour <laughs> to say. So I'm going to just stop it there. And it okay. looks like we're going to have to bring you back because there's there a go. lot of like technical questions that I, that I wanted to dive into with, uh, with your process. And yeah, Claire brought us to meta, which is cool. Which is really great. <laughs> and I love when she does that because she's good at it and it makes you feel like you learned something. Um, but so, especially when you come out of it, like a better person. So. Uh, yeah. I'm here for it. I feel like I'm, I've been improved. I've, I've like, I didn't Stop. expect this, this conversation. So, so don't worry. Um, you're, uh, there won't be a medical bill, but <laughs> we appreciate the support. And, um, before we, roll that music is there anything else we should ask of adam before we bring him back for another episode one day i'm super excited not asking but i'm really excited to see where your youtube channel goes um Seriously. yeah like i think it's i'm really fascinated by that i think i think i would be um you got another subscriber from me as well but i think Sheesh. what I was, what i'm not you know, i really <laughs> hope it's not to be totally honest i hope it's not just another stop motion channel Thank you. Cool. It doesn't look like it right now. Yeah, exactly. It doesn't sound like it's going to be. And I think it doesn't sound like that's that's on even on the table. So I'm excited for that. Yeah. Like it's always. So the thing is, is and I'll tell you why I said that is the Lego space is really it's a small one. And it weirdly feels like really limited as far as like the content that you can do, which I think is a complete falsification. I think it's that's not true at all. I think it's because it's small. It feels that way. And so I think there's just a space for any kind of fresh air to be blown into it. And um, it really sounds like uh, you're going to be one of those creators, which is great. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I mean, that's what I hope to do. I mean, honestly, like it's, and, and we talked earlier about, you know, all the, you know, the avoiding the burnout and finding the middle ground. And really the YouTube channel for me is like what I would love to see this year, next year kind of really grow. And, you know, I've had a blast, you know, putting effort into the content there and, uh, just kind of having fun with it. So I've got a lot of videos planned that I haven't posted in like two months. So don't don't go look at my last upload, but it's uh, it'll be coming soon. This month or next month, I'll be posting a bunch of content there. So yeah, it'll be fun. Awesome. Cool. Like you said earlier, guys, he had his hands full. My hands were full. <laughs> I've got a I've got a big build sitting here on the table. I can't turn the camera and show you, but yeah, it's yeah. But you gotta gotta keep reminding yourself, like you gotta work work for you, not for. Disney or Lego or yes. anybody. Yes. Like, Build know. my own empire. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. And, All right. And then. an empire. <laughs> With that being said, once again, Claire got the last word. Let's roll that music. Thank you again, Adam. Everyone have a good one. Peace. Wow. That was good. That was good. There we go. <laughs> that was good. Thanks, that was guys. Cool. No, thanks for coming on. It was dope. Yeah. It was I a love very good come back. I love yeah. it. I want to talk about it. I'm always down. Oh,